I'm Matt Bichard with REIT.com here in Chicago for REIT Week 2013. Joining me for this CEO Spotlight is Dennis Gershenson, the President and CEO of Ramco Gershenson Properties Trust. Dennis, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Now, your company's been active in enhancing the overall quality of your portfolio, in part by disposing of some assets. Can you talk about the types of properties you're looking to shed and how responsive buyers have been in this market? We're interested in owning a portfolio of high-quality shopping centers in major metropolitan markets, primarily primarily multi-anchored shopping centers. Therefore, as part of our portfolio, we had uh, a number of assets that maybe didn't qualify for what we want to own going forward. It might fall into several categories. The first category uh, is assets that we own that may have had some issues with some of our anchor tenants, such as was experienced with Linens and Things and Circuit City. When we looked at those assets, and even though there were prospective tenants to replace the tenant that had left, by the time we would have invested the energy as well as the capital into those assets and then looked at selling them, the ultimate cap rate that we would have gotten may not have justified the investment. So that's category number one. Category number two would be those assets that probably didn't fall into the demographic profile that we want to own going forward, or it just may be a, a single anchor uh, that may not have been, let's say, the number one supermarket in that trade area. And then lastly, are those centers maybe a very high quality asset, but it's the only asset in the state. We're not interested in expanding uh, in that particular community, and therefore it doesn't uh, make a lot of sense to own just one asset in, in one particular locale. And your company owns a variety of assets in, in many different markets, as we talked about, with many different tenants. But is there any sort of commonality that you can use to describe what makes a successful shopping center? Let, let's start with the fact that uh, the, the old adage of location, location, location is still valid today. But uh, the, probably the scope of that definition has expanded so that your location needs to be in a very vibrant trade area. What does that mean? It means that uh, it, the trade area is at least stable, you've got significant new household formations, you've got good educational levels, uh, you have people moving in instead of moving out. Uh, then you need to go to the specific asset, the character of the asset, the type of draws that you have in the, in the specific tenants who occupy it, and then the creditworthiness of those retailers. And then lastly, uh, you need to make sure that the retailers who are occupying your center are the types of draws that respond to the market in which you're in. Uh, are they the latest and greatest concepts, or are some of them either older and tired, or are they ones that are most vulnerable to uh, outside forces such as the internet? And in May, your company went to the market with two debt offerings. Can you talk a little bit about what those proceeds are earmarked for and how that fits into your overall balance sheet health? Uh, we have worked since uh, 2009 in building a rock solid uh, financial structure. And uh, what we did in the spring of this year is we came to an agreement with one of our partners, the Clarion Lion Fund, to buy 12 of the 15 shopping centers we have in that joint venture. So we wound up acquiring about $250 million uh, in assets. Uh, we specifically then went out and did both a seven-year bank loan uh, with a 3.5% uh, coupon for seven years. And we did our first private placement, uh, unsecured private placement. And we were able to secure, on average, a 10-year loan at 4%. Uh, replacing 7.3 percent money. So it was a win-win. What we did was we used the proceeds, or will use the proceeds because we're closing at the end of June, to replace this 7.5 percent secured financing. So number one, we took secured assets and made them unsecured, and uh, we have been able to improve uh, our interest uh, rates by over 300 basis points. Dennis, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com. <laughs>